Transition Awareness Breathing. Feeling grounded for both children and parents is essential for healthy living and learning. Join Eartha Powell on this series for tips and tools for creating a harmonious environment for learning. Transition Awareness Breathing will help you and your child find an individualized path to tackle change, promote lifelong learning, and discover new approaches to calmness. Hi, everyone. It's me, Eartha. Welcome to Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast. I'm outside. We've been having some very hot weather here in Texas. I think it got up to like 105. (laughs) I think it's one of the hottest summers so far, but we shall continue our podcast here at Transition Awareness Breathing. I thought this would be a great time to go over some practices that we can do outside and even point out some safety pointers that probably you already know. So I got my hat on and it is not 105 right now. Uh, The sun is setting, but uh, it seems like this hat is creating a nice, like when the wind blows, um, it blows in between these um, the straw holes, you know, and so it just makes a very nice breeze around my face and underneath my glasses. <laughs> so anyway, before I go uh, any farther, I would like to thank Web Talk Radio for allowing me to bring Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast to you and and to uh, Mary Lou and Sam. Thank you so much for making Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast available to my listeners everywhere everywhere they go. Okay, so now let's get started. When we talk about mindful walking, for instance, we're going to do a little bit of that during this session um, and just a little bit of just mindful sitting. What we mean is just to concentrate and to focus on the way your body is taking in information through its five senses right now. And so um, I have to say, I'm getting a little bit distracted because I am in the midst of like talking to you. (laughs) And then I hear all these bugs and I just want to go into practice right away. But I just want to make a few pointers. When we're practicing mindfulness, mindful walking in particular, we're not really walking to get anywhere. What we're doing is we're concentrating on our step, concentrating on, you know, putting one foot and step to another, letting our mind just take in the information that is around us, the the sight, the sound, the smells, um, things that we hear, uh, distracting thoughts are going to come. And because we're in the middle of a mindfulness practice, we're just going to let those distracting thoughts just pass. Now, I have a good analogy for a distracting thought because I'm on my phone right now. Have you ever been on your phone and maybe you're in a Zoom meeting or or, uh, a conference call or something and you get a pop-up and it may be something that's not really important that you really don't need to pay attention to. And so what do you do? You let the pop-up just melt away or you just click it off. That's just like the distracting thoughts that occur when you're doing a mindfulness practice. Well, let's just call them pop-ups. These pop-ups, these, these distracting thoughts, are just forms of other information that's been sitting around and it decided to make itself available to you right now. <laughs> because at this time, well, what are we doing? We're trying to bring ourselves to a calmness and appreciate our our health, we're appreciating 
kindness that we're taking for ourselves. And maybe we are paying attention to um, just the different sounds and colors that are around us. So when we're focused on things like that, these distracting thoughts just kind of pop up. Just like, you know, if you're on your phone or on your computer, you get a pop-up. Of course, if it's an emergency, of course, you, you know, you attend to it. But most of the time when our distracting thoughts pop up, although it may pop up as an urgency, it's usually something that you can just put, put aside for a second and continue your practice. And that's something that we have to get stronger at. I'm looking around as I would encourage you to, to join me in this practice of mindfulness. If you are in a place where you can go outside, make sure it's safe and that you're comfortable. So now we're going to go over some points about some mindfulness practices when we're outside. Do what you can, whatever your ability allows. You know, if you are not able to go outside, then you can practice a mindfulness practice of walking or sitting inside. But just make sure you're safe. And I have to say, you know, if it's too hot, we're not trying to prove anything to anyone. Don't go outside if it's too hot or get too dehydrated or we'll get um, overexposed to the sun, to the heat. If it's comfortable for you, by all means, go outside. Bring some water for hydration. When you're drinking, <clears throat> make sure you do a little bit of mindfulness while you're drinking. I felt the coldness of the water going down and around my throat. It's so refreshing. You know, when we're doing our mindfulness practice, we're, we're we are paying attention to everything. Okay. I'm looking at the sky. I love the color blue. Um, let me see if I can switch my camera around. Let's see. And show you the blue sky. I think I can do this. Okay, so I don't know if you can appreciate the blueness. Can you see that the Towards the bottom, there's like orange, and then towards the top, it goes to this beautiful blue. I'm going to bring my camera around and see that orange hue around. Now, since we're outside, I'd like to take you on a walk. I'm going to mindfully walk. I have a little garden patch over here. And I feel, um, mindfulness walking means we're not really going anywhere, but I want us to go to this little patch of garden I have in my backyard. Uh, because I find myself, when I'm exploring my little patch of garden, it's a teeny tiny little garden, I feel I feel a sense of gratitude. Um, I am amazed that, you know, you put a little seed in the ground and these beautiful uh, fruits appear. So, you know, this little basil plant right here. I got this basil plant at Walmart. And it was like on the clearance aisle. And now look at it. The leaves, it's just brilliant. It probably could make pesto out of this because there's so many leaves. It's, it's about to, it's flowering. And you know what, you guys, I'm using, I, I read an article that you can use some of the flowers of, you know, you make sure it's safe uh, to make tea. And that's what I've been doing. I've been making like basil tea and it's really, really tasty. So prepare yourself to do something different, to give your taste buds vacation, do something different. I'm walking over here, so mindfully walking and exploring the different shapes of the leaves. I'm going to bend down so you can find the camera. Get a little bit closer now. And I'm paying attention to the roundness of these leaves and the veins. And you'll see some bug life with ants and stuff they're crawling around you can't stop nature right and over here you see a little cantaloupe 
and flowers. I told you this is a little garden, so uh, <laughs> uh, I am not an expert garden, but I love to, I just love the process of um, planting something and watching it grow. I'm going into this little patch a little bit so you can get a better idea. See, that's a watermelon. It's a watermelon right there. And there's another, another one, another uh, watermelon over here to see it, a cantaloupe. And there's some cantaloupe right here, there. And so there's all kinds of surprises. And it takes a, it takes a while, you know, you, you plant your garden and do you know that plants really like positive thoughts and you talk to them and you visit them and give them credit for all the hard work they're doing and the little flowers, they draw butterflies and they help pollinate the pollination process. There's a little, little guy, another watermelon and so I'm surprised because um, before I didn't really have a lot of luck with growing watermelon. And here, if you see these, these tiny little flowers, let's see, right there, let me see again. These are green beans. Now I thought the green beans were finished, but lo and behold, um, they're not finished. They're, they're starting again. So let me see. I can see a little flower right there. Right there. And the heat has really, really uh, made all the plants struggle. And so I am amazed and surprised and thankful for how this garden is really producing the fruit. I'm going to walk over um over here it's a it's a little teeny tiny part of the garden and I briefly showed it to you by walking and this is I'm gonna show you another plant that I got that was on clearance <laughs> at uh Walmart. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna turn the camera around. There we go. Sorry my finger is in the way. Okay, so uh, these tomato plants, they, they're they very thirsty. They have been watered. They're a bit, uh, I probably could thin them out. I'm going to see if I can show you a little, little drop of a tomato right there. And they're green. And so they're, I am... Um, amazed and so happy that it's producing tomatoes. So even in the heat, these, these this little uh, garden patch is really not producing that so good. Look at this beautiful leaf. Can you guess what kind of leaf this is? Okay, who said cucumber? You're right. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you know the deal about cucumbers. It looks like when you plant one, you get like a whole bunch of them, right? With this little cucumber. Look at that cucumber. Oh my goodness. Oh, can you see that? Can you see it? It's right here. This cucumber is humongous. Yeah, sorry. And it has grown since yesterday. Yeah. Somebody said, it's time to pick that guy. And and here's his brother or sister or aunt, uncle, whatever it is. Okay, there you go. You see it? Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, the other day, these guys were about that big. What's the deal with cucumbers? So I already picked two cucumbers, and there's two more. It's like replacing. It's like a two-cucumber plant. Perfect. So wonderful. 
And when I eat the cucumbers, you know, that mindful eating, it's just everywhere. The, um, the, the fresh cucumbers that come out of the garden, it tastes so crisp and crunchy. It just seems like it has a lot of, um, a lot more flavor to it than I expected than when I get at, at the store. <laughs> so I hope that, uh, this hasn't, uh, been too boring for you, but I'm just out here and I wanted you to join me in, um, the evening as the sun's going down and this wonderful breeze. Um, I smell the smell of fresh cut grass. My son cut the grass this afternoon. The bugs, I don't know what kind of bugs they are, but everybody's singing. <laughs> All the bugs are singing. So they add a music to the, to the outdoors. The breeze, it feels so refreshing. And so as we continue in our summer, I invite you to find a time where it's safe and uh, you're not going to get sunburned. Remember to put your sunscreen on, take your water, and enjoy the mindfulness of the moment. When I was in the military, I always would tell my um, my Navy uh, staff on my on my unit to make a, a make a memory. So, and making a memory is like you know when you take a picture, you're taking a picture of right now. So I invite you to take a picture of your right now in this uh, warm summer weather. Thank you for joining me, and uh, I'm here underneath this big old hat. <laughs> I invite you also. Uh, to check out my new book. It's on Amazon.com, The Power of Devar, uh, Rising from the Pit of Hell. And I am running a special on that book in a few days. You'll see it, you'll check it out. And I put some um, sample pages inside the, the Amazon uh, advertisement thing. And so you'll be able to read a few pages so I appreciate you and thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful week. I'll talk to you again next time. Bye. Be sure and pick up a copy of Eartha's new book, Tab Mindfulness, Awareness and Coloring Activities in a Pandemic World. It's not just an ordinary coloring book. It features 23 illustrations to stimulate thought, relaxation, and creativity for anyone between the ages of 4 and 94. Increase your positive self-talk energy. Unlock new creative paths. Transform your time once or twice a week to create beautiful art while strengthening confidence, building positive self-talk, and sensitize self-awareness. Tab Mindfulness, awareness and coloring activities in a pandemic world. It's available now at Amazon.com.